see you one more time. I want the blankety blank. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh my the devil trying to intimidate him. And then our uh, next thing, God is so real. He, he allowed me. Oh, he knew what he was going to do with my Amen. life. He allowed me. Yeah, I was cussing in church. <laughs> don't look at me like that. Some of you are still cussing in church. But it ain't happening to <laughs> Listen. So I, I looked at his eyes, and there were like two balls of flaming fire. Mm. Like the burning bushes in both eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that's what I saw. And I'm just like, uh, uh -oh. I met my match. <laughs> you know, and then he started to put his hands on me. Uh -oh. And I didn't like to be touched. You know, he put his hands on me, and he started to cast out the devils. And the next thing I know, I'm leaping at his throat, uh -oh. choking him, cursing like crazy. <laughs> Everybody backing up, fussing. <laughs> and me and him are going at it. But guess what? I'm so glad I lost that fight. Because greater was in him than was who, who was yes. in me. Yes. And that's the short end of it. And then you know the rest of it, because I'm here today, 40 Amen. years later. Amen. 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 And I've got the peace of God. Yeah. It never changed my mind, it never changed my direction. And now I'm going to share the word of God with you a little bit in light of that. Hallelujah. <laughs> what made the difference? Getting saved, yep. yes. getting dedicated, getting committed, following, you know, the baptism of water, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And loving God and His Word. Yeah. That's what brings peace. Anything short of that, you're going to struggle. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you don't fall in love with the Lord and love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you will struggle. Mm -hmm. If you don't yield and surrender, amen, even with everything I'm telling you, you're still going to have your problems. We ain't made heaven yet. Amen? We're still on planet Earth. We're still struggling. But I always say, and I'll say it again, I'd rather struggle with Jesus Christ than without Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I know He's going to see me through somehow, some way, because He's a way maker. Amen? Amen. Glory Amen. be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what makes the difference, praise God, in this world. That's the difference between having God in your life, you know what I'm saying, to make the difference, to give you peace, and not having Him in your life. When I wanted to blow my brains out. Now here's another part of that testimony. After I got saved. After I got delivered. After I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't you know. That that sickness came back on me. That I had that sickness seven times in my life. Seven times that disease hit me. Each time it was life threatening. Each time it took me a year to a year and a half to recuperate. Added up 15 years out of my life being crippled. I went from being near death to a hospital bed in the hospital for months, going home, being treated at home, going to a wheelchair, going to crutches, going to a cane, and then being made whole again. Amen. How seven times? Now, the Lord allowed it to happen this last time as a Christian because, see, God works everything out for you. Yes. I yes. didn't understand, but here was the difference. When it hit me that last time, I said, wait a minute. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm saved. What's Amen. going on here? Feel with the Holy Ghost now. What's happening yeah. here? And the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, I got it under control. Amen. Just go with the flow. Just don't get bitter. Get better. Just yeah. trust Amen. me. And I did that. And you know what happened? <clears throat> God allowed me in that whole year to read his word Amen. through. Amen. Three, four times in a year, I read it from cover to cover that first year. Thank you. 20, 30 chapters, 40 chapters a day. Amen. Praying. I couldn't do anything else. What Paul went out and he had to go out and, and Moses went out and Paul went out. They were like in the desert and being... God trained me that whole time. And then the other six months recuperating, I did similar to the same thing. So within that year and a half, God has put like 10 years of Bible in my mind and heart. Amen. So I, I just went with the flow. And, and thank God, after that, after he was trained, he said, all right, now you're ready to go. And I started to minister and so forth. And uh, God had healed me. And that was like, uh, I don't know how many years ago, but it never happened since. Amen. 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 God allowed it that last time to see if I would keep the peace. Yes. And I would be able to share with people like you. And I shared this all over the world as I traveled and give my testimony and preach to different people, different congregations and so forth. But here's the thing. I didn't have any peace. wanted to blow my brains out before Jesus. And now the same condition, same disease, yeah. same everything, except my mind was different. 
My heart was different. Yeah. Now I belong to Jesus. And that gave me the peace of God that passes all understanding. The joy of the Lord that gave me strength in the midst of that. When I wanted to die over here because I had no peace. Do you see the difference? Amen. Jesus makes the difference Amen. when you surrender. Amen. When you don't Amen. hold nothing back. I don't know what you're facing. It might not be a sickness. It might not be a disease. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's bankruptcy. I don't care what it is. All I know is if you hold on to Christ. Yeah. Amen. You don't get bitter, but you get better. And you keep on pursuing your love for Jesus. I can promise you, you will land on your feet. Yes. Amen. I can yeah. promise you that it will work out for your good. And for God's glory. I can promise you, even though the devil meant it for evil, God will make good come out of it. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Amen. 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 Give him a praise to somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How do you think all the prophets of old and the disciples of old went through and was able to handle what they could handle? They were persecuted. They were murdered. They were martyred, and the list goes on. Why? How could they do that? Well, before, like Peter, how could he do it? Before, before he was filled with the Holy Ghost and power uh, from on high, before, you know, uh, uh, he had to, uh, could, had to make sure that the prophecy would be taken care of when Jesus said, somebody's going to be betraying me, and he betrayed him. He had to do it, okay? Because it was already prophesied, and it just happened to be Peter. But how could, hey, how could he do that? And then one, after he betrayed Jesus Christ, he wanted to run away, and he was a coward, and everything else. And then after he gets filled with the Holy Ghost, power and the fire of God comes down on his life. Now he's ready to be crucified. Amen. Amen. He's, he's bold as a lion, and he gets crucified upside down and don't complain a bit. How? By the peace of God. That's how. Amen. How do the prophets do it? By the peace of God. Salt in half, cooked in oil, all these things. Amen. The Bible says how they died martyrs' deaths. And none of them complained. Throw to the lines. Mm -hmm. And we complain over a splinter. Mm -hmm. We murmur and complain over the silliest things. Yes. And yet, these men of God. And guess what? God's not a respecter of person. He expects us, He expects it out of any of us and all of us. Why? Because the same Jesus that lived in them lives in us. Amen. The same Holy Ghost that brought them through can bring you through. He's just looking for the same faith that was in them to be in us. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's the difference. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Just like the Jews when they say shalom. Amen. That just means peace. But take it a little deeper. God was talking today about inner peace. Some people have peace up here. That's not land. I'm talking about Christians. You know, it's just a little bit of peace. Or, you know, now and then peace. But I'm talking about inner peace. That's there all the time, 24-7, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you face. you just got that something in there. It's called that peace of God. That passes all understanding. You can't explain it. You just know it's there. And it's able to get you through what you're going through. That's the peace of God, my friend. Hallelujah. Amen. It's called great peace. Woo, blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because it doesn't matter what you're going through, what you're facing. Amen. It doesn't really matter because greater is he that's in you. Amen. And he that you're facing or what you're facing in the world. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter. Just, I'll tell you where you get your strength from and your peace from is right here in the world. Your relationship first with Christ you drive yourself to the... You gotta have, listen, you can't. You can make yourself... You can force yourself to read the Word all day. But you won't get much out of it. You have to have a love of, of the Word of God. You have to have a desire to want to be in the Word of God. For no other reason. Not to show off how much you know or how much knowledge you have. But that you can have an understanding of who your King is even more so. And to help the bleeding and suffering and hurting in our world today. That's why you read the Word of God. Mm. Amen. First, it's for you because you can't help anybody else. You know what I mean? If you if you don't have it, how are you going to help somebody drowning if you can't swim? Mm -hmm. Come on, you know how you when you're flying. I did a lot of flying in my day, and when you fly and, and the oxygen runs out of the cabin, you know the all the oxygen masks fall down. They they tell you the first you have a little child next to you. The first thing you think of doing here, baby, here, and then you pan out. And you can't help the kid no more. So they say, no, you take the oxygen first. Then you give it to the child. 
so that you can, and then you go back and forth if you have to, so that you're able to help the child. If you pass out in the airplane, what well, good are you to the child? Child won't know, what do I do with this thing? And you both die. You get the picture? You need the Word of God in your own life operating. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Just look around at what's going on today and all the... Yeah, I'm talking church folks now. There's so much depression in the church. So many suicidal thoughts in the church. People do, do, dealing with those kind of things all the time. Amen. No, no, all the nervous breakdowns. All these kind of things. Why? Oh, they'll tell you they're fine. They'll tell you they're good and all that. It's because there's no peace in their heart. It's because of what I just told you how to get peace. They're not doing it. And I know this works. I'm going to tell you something. This works for everybody. Again, God's not a respecter of person. This will work for whoever works it. If you don't work it, it won't work. Amen. It just won't work for you. You have to work it. You got to believe it. You got to live it. Drink it. Sleep it. Walk it. Talk it. Especially these last days. You're going to need it more than ever. Your life depends on it. Your future depends on it. Your family depends on it. Your soul depends on it. Eternity depends on it. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what they tell you, they'll have no peace because the Bible tells us that peace comes from God. That's right. Peace comes from God. You're either serving the Prince of the Air or the Prince of Peace. That's right down the middle. You can't serve two masters. If you're serving the Prince of Peace, which is Jesus Christ, He'll see you through anything. If you're serving the other guy, the Prince of this world, you'll end up where He's going. And I don't recommend it. Amen? Mm. Well, someone say, but Pastor, how can, I, how can I get this kind of peace? James tells us like this. And he's talking to the church. You might think he's talking to the world, but he's talking to the church. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God. That means draw close to God and He will draw close to you. Next verse. I don't have time to read it all. I'm picking out the highlights. You read it when you go home. James 4, 8, 9, 10. And it says, verse, verse 8, 9 talks about repenting. you got to repent. The next thing it says, and humble yourself. Verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Not in the sight of man. You know, to pretend or get over or look at me. Or, no, in the sight of God first. Humble yourself. God hates the prideful. I just gave you some of my testimony. I was pride, proud as a peacock. Walking around like a peacock. 